It didn't come from him being critical of other players. If anything, that discouraged players. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello and good day everyone, welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David, thanks for tuning in, let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to talk to you guys about some NBA legends that have some rather interesting things to say about Michael Jordan. And the thing is, there are some players who don't agree that Jordan is the GOAT, which is totally fine, but then you have some guys who are a little disrespectful and a little... Weird. And in this video, I want to expose those guys and their claims in a respectful way. Let's take a look. Now the first player that I want to take a look at is Isaiah Thomas. Now everybody knows that Isaiah Thomas hates Michael Jordan and the relationship at one point was at least in a way that Isaiah could give Michael Jordan credit but since the Last Dance documentary came out Isaiah is all over Jordan with negative comments. And yeah let's take a look and then I will give you my opinion. Michael Jordan didn't beat Larry Bird. You show Michael Jordan going between his legs one time in the highlights you know, against Larry Bird. And that was the game he got 63. That's when he dropped 63 on Bird. Yes. yes. But That's his memory serves me correct. They got he lost. swept. No, not, not lost. They got yes. swept. Let me clarify this for the youngsters on the panel. Yeah, Jordan was a great player in the 80s, but they were finishing third and fourth right. yes. in the division. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, so... <laughs> So I know all y'all watching want to say, oh, Jordan was the He was great in the 90s. Yes. He dominated yes. in the 90s. Yes. But in the 80s, he was out in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why this video and these kind of interviews to me are total nonsense and far away from any logic is Isaiah Thomas is saying that Jordan was out in the, fir uh, in the first round in the 1980s and he did not beat Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Larry Bird. And yes, of course he did not, but did you look at his team? I mean, what kind of comparison is that? How can you compete the mid 80s to late 1980s Chicago Bulls to the Showtime Lakers to the Boston Celtics who had like four or five Hall of Famers on their roster while the Bulls had a very young, immature Scottie Pippen, a very young, immature Horace Grant and the rest was role players, especially the mid-1980s Bulls. The Bulls were terrible. They had a terrible roster. Take a look at the players and tell me how many of those players do you really know? How many players of these uh, of these teams were actually all-star put um, all-star players? And you want to compare that with Lakers, Matt Johnson, Byron Scott, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, A.C. Green, um, Kurt Rambis, James Worthy, Michael Cooper, Boston Celtics, Larry Bird, um, Dennis Johnson, Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish, Danny Ainge, Bill Walton. How can you compare that? And Isaiah Thomas is always ta talking like his Pistons teams also sucked in the early 80s and it took them a while to be relevant. Yes, we're talking late 80s. That's when the Pistons were good. And so that comparison to me does not make sense. And I'm 100% sure Isaiah Thomas knows that. He's, a, he's such a smart man and I actually like him, but he knows what he's doing and he knows what he's saying. So that argument is rubbish. It does not make sense at all. How can you compare that? Next case. I seen Michael Jordan play before I came to play with the Bulls. You guys seen him play. He's a horrible player. He was horrible to play with. He was all one-on-one. -on -one. He's shooting bad shots. And all of a sudden, we become a team and we start winning. Everybody forgot who he was. Now, as we all know, the relationship between Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen went 
super sour. And it's one of the biggest heartbreaks of my basketball fan fandom. Um, I hate it. I really, really hate it that those guys don't get along anymore. And I hope now that the relationship between Michael Jordan's son and Scottie Pippen's ex-wife has ended, that hopefully in the future, the relationship between Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen go comes back together. It's unrealistic, but hey, hopes. Now concerning his claims, Scottie Pippen is saying that Michael Jordan was a horrible player in the 80s, which is also bullshit. It has a lot to do with that the Bulls team was terrible, as I mentioned before. But I can give you a better example. If you take a look at Michael Jordan's college career, he was playing for North Carolina, where he had a well-rounded team. He had um, James Worthy on his side, he had uh, Kenny Smith on his side, he had Sam Perkins on his side, so he had good players surrounding him. And if you take a look at how Michael Jordan played, yes, he was averaging around 20 to 22 points, but he also was sharing the ball a lot more. Why? Because the offensive load could be shared on multiple shoulders. When he then entered the NBA, who, who was he supposed to pass the ball to? Yeah, and as you know, Michael Jordan is the winner. He does whatever it takes to win games. And at that time, I 100% understand the best option to win games is score by himself. Another great example, if you take a look at the 1984 Olympic team, Michael Jordan won the gold medal with his team, but he was also a team player there. Yes, he was averaging more points, but he was still a team player. So it really mattered who did you surround Michael Jordan. And the reason why Michael Jordan at the late 1980s so I'm talking 1989, uh, was still a little bit more of a scorer and still a little bit more selfish was because he was so used now being a Bulls player, having to carry the entire load of the entire team that it takes some time to transition. Yeah, and I'm also, no, I'm not 100% sure that Scottie Pippen sees it that way because I think he is so emotional at the moment that rationalism is not taking place. But hey, that's my opinion. Next case. So what's the criteria? Michael Jordan is not the, the leading scorer in the history of the game. He's not the winningest player in the history of the game. He's not the most versatile player in the history of the game. So how, how can you say he's the greatest player? Clive Frazier, obviously one of the greatest players of all time, never was a big Michael Jordan fan, probably because Jordan uh, hurt his New York Knicks so many times. But his argument that how can Jordan be the GOAT if he's not the all-time leading scorer, if he's not the winningest uh, person in NBA history, um, that he is not the most um, ver versatile player. Sorry, man, but that argument has so many holes. First of all, he is one of the most versatile players of all time. Tell me, what was his weakness? And and don't tell me three-point shooting was his weakness. No, it was not his weakness. He was just not shooting a high volume because it wasn't, wasn't necessary. Why would you take three-point sh shots if you can get easy two points? Different mentality back in the days. Then great defense, great, great offense in general. Great passer too. Yes, don't underestimate it. Yes, he was a first scorer. A score first uh, player, but he could pass. Um, great shot blocker for his position. Probably one of the greatest shot blockers ever as a shooting guard. So, yes, one of the winningest uh, players of all time. Yes, um, he won six championships. Don't forget, he set out two years in his prime and ended his career while he probably still could have won another championship. So that argument also falls flat, in my opinion. Next case. Ron, I'm sorry, my guy. Jordan is back to go. Listen, this is why. You gotta be the go. You ran the cocaine out of the eight. Like, you literally ran the cocaine out of these players. Like, you was running circles around them that in the 90s they had to clean their shit up. They wouldn't even remember playing with MJ. That's how hot he was. Doing that Antarctica. The NBA had a really big problem with the booger sugar from the NBA. <laughs> they were literally throwing games for drug habits. So I have to give it to Michael Jordan. He's back to the GOAT for what he did for the 80s. He was a clinic by himself. This video I wanted to show you guys because Gilbert Arenas, I consider him or considered him a Michael Jordan hater because up until like half a year ago, he was coming out with outlandish claims about Michael Jordan, things that make no sense from a basketball standpoint. And now all of a sudden, Jordan is the GOAT to him again. And if you see that reasoning why, I don't know, man. Just wanted to, just wanted you guys to see that clip. Anyway, you guys, let me know how do you feel about those clips that I just showed you. What is your opinion about that? And hopefully, I see you next time on the basketball time machine. Armstrong is on the floor for the Bulls, along with Michael Jordan. 
Inbounds a cart right to Jordan. Time winding down. Michael for three. Yeah! yeah!